This is the 2023 Tire Views Winter Tire Test. If you've seen any of my tire tests before, you'll know exactly what to expect. I am testing 11 of the newest and greatest ultra high performance winter tires in a 225-45 18 inch size on a BMW 3 Series, and I'll be testing them as thoroughly as possible, including dry, wet, and of course, snow testing, and we'll also be looking at the rolling resistance and comfort of the tires and the noise levels to find out exactly which of these 11 tires is best for you. Not only are we testing these 11 tires, I'm also testing an all season and a summer tire in this test. So we can see just how good a summer tire is in the dry, just how bad it is in the snow and where an all season tire fits into the bigger picture. Should be a really exciting test. So let's get on with the testing. The two slowest tires on test were the only two asymmetric patterns. A coincidence? I don't think so. Will this repay in dry and wet? We'll find out in a bit. They were the Falcon and the Budget Leo, Leo, Leo. I'm gonna call it Le Leo, but just excuse me if that's wrong. Now, the Falcon noticeably had the most understeer of all the tires, and that is when you're trying to get the tire into the corner, the car just wouldn't turn. So that means you had to be so delicate on the way in, and it was a bit of a frustrating experience, and that left it about 7% down on the best. The Budget tire was a little bit more balanced front and rear, but what it didn't give you was any feedback whatsoever through the steering wheel or through your butt to tell you when you were at the limit of the grip. And a good tire should give you confidence to push on by being communicative. And that's where the budget uh, fell down. The next pair of tires was the GT and Continental. Both of these tires had good grip. It was just a little bit peaky. And by peaky, what I mean is as you got to the limit of grip, as you'd start to slide, it would happen a bit quickly and you'd have to maybe try and catch it, maybe get on the brakes to neutralize some understeer or get some opposite lock on to catch the oversteer. Now we're talking small margins, but this is what happens in tire tests. You look for the small margins. And that was the characteristics of those two tires. Kumo, Bridgestone and Redstone were next, all just half a percent apart from each other. So very, very close. The Kumo, like the previous two tires, was a tiny bit peaky. Whereas the Bridgestone, the Bridgestone loved a bit of understeer. The Redstone Windtrack Pro, now as you know, if you're a regular viewer to the channel, I do test blind, so I don't know what I'm testing on as I'm driving. And in last year's test, in a different size, on a different car, the Redstone Windtrack Pro wasn't the best in snow, and it wasn't my favorite. But in this test, particularly strong. I don't know if it's been a midlife update or maybe the snow conditions just suit it a little bit better. So constant progression is excellent. The final group of tires was Hankook, Prelli, and Goodyear. Now, all three of these tires were excellent. They all had strong turning, good mid-corner grip, good traction out the corners and felt great on the brake. So all three of these are excellent winter tires. Which was my favorite to drive? It was the Hankook. The other two, they were excellent, but like some previous tires, they were just a little bit more peaky at and past the limit. Whereas the Hankook, I really enjoyed it as a winter tire last year in a different size on a different platform. So now I'm very happy that I can report I'm really enjoying it again. It just gave you confidence to really do what you wanted. And of the tires, it probably gave you the most feedback through the steering. Fabulous winter tire by Hankook and consistent, obviously, across the sizes. Finally, the astute of you might have noticed there is a space at the top of the scoreboard. Can you guess which tire fills it? You're probably right if you know about tires. It is once again, the Michelin Pilot Alpine 5. Now, the French manufacturer seems to do something very special with the Pilot Alpine range. And once again, this tire was just outstanding, almost in a class of its own. Slightly ahead of the Hankook in terms of subjective handling, it did everything the Hankook does and then just gave you that little bit more grip. So that gave you a bit more confidence to push on. Oh, joyful tire to drive. The Michelin and the Hankook were my favorites for sure, but the Goodyear and Prelli were excellent. In fact, they were all pretty good. What about the all-season tire? The all-season tire I'm using is the Hankook Kinergy 4S2. Now, as you know from my all-season tire test last year, if you've watched it, this is a very good all-season tire, but isn't the best all-season tire in snow, perhaps. Yet it slots in at seventh. And in this group of tires on this BMW, it felt every bit as good as some of the winter tires. So impressive job for this all-season tire. It's, it's gonna make the end of this video a little bit confusing if it slots in with the winter tires in every test, but in theory, it'll do better in the dry and wet. The summer tire, now the summer tire, it's a summer tire in snow. I'm not sure what you're expecting me to say. It was only about 45% slower, but subjectively, it felt much worse than that. You really had to tiptoe around the lap, 
everything you did was a little bit terrifying and traction especially there's a very small hill here and traction especially you were you were really worried about getting up so let's see how it does and all the other tires do in traction and braking as in snow handling the michelin had the best snow traction with the hankook and goodyear in second and third places the summer tire was naturally awful and the all-season tire an impressive mid-pack result it was a similar trend for snow braking except for the hankook jumped the michelin for the win and the bridgestone edged out the goodyear to take third place the falcon was sadly the worst winter tire in both tests and again in snow braking the all-season tire finished in seventh place overall if you've already seen my all-season test this year you'll know what i'm about to say Due to the test facility used for dry and wet testing this year having restrictions on filming, I'm going to talk about the dry and wet performance of the tyres here. The fastest around the wet lap also had the best wet braking, and you won't be surprised to know it as the Bridgestone Blizzak LM005. This tyre always performs well in the wet, and once again it was outstanding in the grip test, even if it was a little bit mid-pack for aquaplaning. The Michelin Pilot Alpine 5 and Continental Winter Contact TS870P were also very impressive in both wet braking and wet handling, and like the Bridgestone, neither was particularly strong in the deeper water of aquaplaning. Hankook, Goodyear and Pirelli were also great tyres in the wet, with the Pirelli managing to be fast around the wet lap and having the best aquaplaning resistance of all the winter tyres, which is a nice combination to have. The Falcon was also good around the lap and had great aquaplaning resistance, but couldn't quite stop the car as well as the best in the test. The GT was great to drive subjectively and had excellent aquaplaning resistance, but it did lack a little bit of grip at the limit in braking and handling, and the Redstein and Kumo finished down the order. Not bad tyres, this is just a very tough group of tyres. The budget tyre, the Leo, well, this was bad, possibly highlighted more by the fact we're using a rear-wheel drive platform, but it was really tricky to get around the lap and was another 10% worse than the 12th place tyre in wet braking, which is over a car length in distance. You know me and cheap tyres, don't. TWDR, the best winter tyre in the wet is the Bridgestone. Unless the water's deep, then it's the Pirelli. But the Michelin and the Continental are also excellent, and the Goodyear and Hankook are also no slouches. Good choices. As I talked about in my all-season test, the siphoning required on winter tyres makes braking very difficult, which means the summer tyre was way ahead of the group during wet braking, and it was also very fast around the wet handling lap. It also had the best aquaplaning resistance by a clear margin. A good reminder to take off your winter tyres once the colder months have passed. Don't be tempted to run on them year-round. Summer tyres are great at what they're meant to do. The all-season tyre was pipped by the amazing Bridgestone and wet braking, and as we saw in the all-season test, the Hankook all-season tyre didn't quite like the deeper parts of the wet handling lap, as it doesn't have the best aquaplaning resistance, so it wasn't the fastest of the group around the lap. Dry braking is even harder than wet braking for winter tyres, as the forces are higher, so once again, the summer tyre had a significant margin, this time over 16% better than the best winter tyre. Think about this, if you see anyone considering running their winter tyres into the summer, slap them. The best winter tyre in dry braking was the Michelin with the Continental a close second. Goodyear, GT and Kumo all did well with the GT and Kumo tying and the Falcon was a short amount behind. Prelude, Bridgestone and Hankook which all did well in wet braking struggled a little bit in dry braking and the Redstone and Lowry rounded out the dry braking results. Dry handling obviously isn't a top priority for a winter tyre but it's still an important category. Pretty much all the tyres were fine with only the Lau being slightly worse of the group. In fact if you ignore the budget tyre, the Lau, all the other tyres within 1.77% of each other is that close in dry handling. The Michelin was the fastest around the lap shock, but a little bit numb compared to some of the most dynamic, with the Continental Goodyear Pirelli and Hankook all being enjoyable to drive. In summary, the Michelin is the best winter tyre overall in the drive, perhaps not the sportiest handling though, and the Continental Kumo and Goodyear all did very well. As with the all-season test, I didn't have the weather to do objective noise, sadly, but two of us did spend quite a lot of time doing subjective noise and comfort on a rather excellent uh, noise and comfort track. There were a bunch of standouts, so if comfort is your thing, you'll be really happy with either the Bridgestone, Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, or Falcon, with the Hankook being the best of the rest. With rolling resistance levels of tyres getting ever more important, but often coming at the expense of wet grip, it's rare to find a tyre that does well in both categories, but a few manufacturers seem to have absolutely nailed it in this test. No one more so than Continental, with a near 6% better rolling resistance than the next best winter tyre, which was the Bridgestone, and over 14% better than the third place tyre. That's ginormous. The budget Lau also did actually do very well in the rolling resistance test. However, in this case, it definitely came at the expense of wet grip and snow grip and dry grip 
and grip grip just you know the Freni G2 and Falcon are the ones to avoid if you're worried about your fuel bill all over 15% worse than the Continental which will translate into a roughly 4% more fuel or energy use okay the final result as always you can find the score weighting I've used on screen and if you don't like it well that's absolutely fine as you can use the link in the description to go to the tire reviews website to adjust the scoring system to work for your own priorities and needs it's also worth noting before we go through the final order this was a very stacked group of tires Last place was the cheap tire shock. Its only redeeming quality was its price and the rolling resistance level. But if you're looking for good levels of grip in the dry, wet or snow, maybe it's worth picking another tire from the results. You know, any of the others would be an improvement. The Falcon Euro Winter HS02 Pro was next. That's a mouthful. Now, this tire did struggle in the rolling resistance test having the worst of the group and wasn't the best in the snow either, but it was obviously much better than the summer tire. It was good in dry and wet handling and had great aquaplaning resistance, so perhaps it's not a bad winter tire for somewhere like the UK that doesn't see that much snow. I would like to see better wet braking in the future revision of this tire though. Kumo Wintercraft WP52 had a similar performance overall to the Falcon, but it was a little bit better in the snow and had slightly better rolling resistance, but it couldn't quite match the Falcon in wet handling. Tip for tap between the two brands. The Redstone Windtrack Pro had a good snow performance overall, a low rolling resistance, but did struggle more in the dry than previous two tires. The Redstone Windtrack Pro has been on the market for quite a long time now, but it's impressive it's still up here. It must have had a lot of midlife updates. And maybe if there's an update in the future, it will just keep on moving up the order. The GT Wintersport S2 narrowly beat the Redstone to seventh place overall. It was a really fun tire to drive, especially in the dry, and had excellent aquaplaning resistance. Its only drawbacks were higher rolling resistance and a reduced levels of comfort, but otherwise a very solid tire. The Prelli Cintrato Winter 2 was actually a similar tire to the GT. It was another fun tire to drive with its best aquaplaning resistance on test, but sadly, like the GT, its rolling resistance was amongst the highest of the group. It did, however, have more grip in the snow and the wet than the GT, hence finishing a place higher. The new Goodyear Ultra Grip Performance 3 and Hankook Winter Icept Evo 3 drew in fourth. The Ultra Grip Performance 3 followed the usual Goodyear DNA of minimal compromises, scoring very well in almost every category. Unusually, the odd one out was rolling resistance. Goodyear is normally very good in this, but the tyre did have one of the best subjective noise and comfort levels on test. The Hankook Winter Icept Evo 3 was one of the best tyres in the snow, which is obviously a very important quality for a winter tyre. It had great grip in the wet with good aquaplaning resistance, However, it did lose out a little bit in the dry with a ninth place dry braking result. It was, however, only 5% off the best in dry braking, so not that far. A solid winter tyre. Third place went to the impressive Continental Winter Contact TS870P, which is the tyre to buy definitely if you drive an EV or you want to save fuel, as it had by far the lowest rolling resistance on test. It also somehow blended all of that with one of the best performances in the dry and excellent grip in the wet. It was a little bit weaker in the snow than the best tire on test, but it was only 4% off the best in snow braking and handling, so again, not a huge gap. Impressive tire, especially when you stop and think about its rolling resistance levels. If you know winter tires, you won't be surprised at the final two tires, but you may be surprised that they all but tied for the win, but with different characteristics. The Bridgestone Blizzak LM005 was again an awesome tire. It was the only tire that could get close to the Continental's rolling resistance levels and was the best tire in the wet and one of the best tires in the snow with excellent noise and comfort. It wasn't the best in the dry, but as it finished so well in almost every other category, the LM005 is proving to still be one of the best winter tires on the market. Very impressive. Technically, the Michelin Pilot Alpine 5 did pip the Bridgestone, but it was such a tiny margin, I'm calling them both test winners. The Michelin was almost untouchable in the snow, especially snow handling, and was completely untouchable in the dry and one of the best in the wet. It didn't quite have the rolling resistance of the bridge drain where it finished nearly 10% behind, but in every other single category, this tire's performance was outstanding. A hugely impressive tire and huge congratulations to Michelin and of course Bridgestone. So that's it. Let me know which winter tire you're going to fit. Go and review your summer tires you're taking off over at tirereviews.com. There's a huge amount of good winter content coming to the channel, so be sure to like and subscribe. Any questions, please ask below. And as always, safe motoring.